All right, so let's quickly recap what we were doing last time. So this is a table of all the results that we have gathered so far, right? All the algorithms that we've discussed, except for the one in yellow, right? So ignore that for the time being. And then we talked about lower bounds, right? And we argued that for scatter and reduce scatter, we have algorithms that match the lower bounds, right? But for all reduce, all to all and broadcast, we did not have a lower bound matching the algorithm, the performance of the algorithm, right? So today we are going to discuss algorithms that match. So what do we need to do? We either need to improve the lower bound, right? Increase that or improve the algorithm or both, right? In order for them to match. Okay. So let's start with the all reduce. So we discussed a recursive doubling algorithm for all reduce and then we discussed how it works on hypercube, right? So what we are going to discuss today is an algorithm. So what is the lower bound for all reduce? So we determined that MTW is a lower bound for all reduce. How did we determine that? So we said that if you have to do an all reduce, if let's say there are P nodes, right? And if these P nodes have to do an all reduce, then since P needs to have the summation of the data that resides on all the other nodes, what that means is that node 1 needs to at least send out all the M elements that it has, right? So here, what, are, what is the size we are considering? We are assuming that the entire size is M, right? With each node, okay? So node 1 needs to send out all the data that it has. Only then you can compute an all reduce. Otherwise, how will the result of node 1 be available on node p on every other node, right? Because every other node needs the summation of the elements, including that of node 1, right? So that means that MTW is a lower bound, ignoring TS because we are talking about large messages over here. Okay, so MTW is a lower bound, but the algorithms we had were of the order of MTW log p, MTW log p, right? Recursive doubling. So how can I design algorithms that are of the order of MTW? Let me arrange all these nodes in a straight line. So we had discussed an algorithm for reduce scatter, if you remember. Recall what is reduce scatter? All the nodes have some data and what you want to do is you want to add up all that data, right? Whenever I say add, it could be other operations also for simplicity, I'm just assuming add right now. So you want to add up all those arrays element wise and you want the result to be scattered across all the nodes. You have this array of size m. So you divide it into p parts, right? So 0, 1 up to p minus 1. So an array of size m exists on all the nodes. And what you want to do is at the end of the operation, you want to sum up all these m by p elements. These are m by p elements, right? You want to sum up all these m by p elements element wise get the summation of these elements and the result should be available on node p. Okay, let me just, it should be 0 to p minus 1. Okay, let's consider 0 to p minus 1. So the result should be available on node p minus 1, right? That's what we want. So how do we do this? Well, what we do is in the first iteration, node 0 sends out the data for the last m by p elements, right? Let me denote that by p minus 1, right? And node 1 sends out the data for 0, that is eventually supposed to reach 0. 2 is going to send out data for 1, 2, 3 and so on, right? So this is one iteration. So what happens at the end of this iteration? This particular data that we're talking about, right? This particular data is now residing with node 1. Right, because 0 has sent its part, the last m by p elements to node 1. So now node 1 is going to add the element wise, its last m by p elements, right, the corresponding portion. And in the second iteration, it's going to forward this to 2, right. And in the third iteration, 2 is going to forward it to 3 and so on. So by the end of p minus 1 iterations, what's going to happen? This data that started off from here is going to end up over here, right? And every node in between would have summed up its corresponding elements. Is that clear? Okay. And similarly, the same thing is happening with all the other parts of the array, 
right? So for the first m by p elements, what is happening for the first m by p elements? Well, in the first iteration, node 1 sent those first m by p elements to node 2. Node 2 added up its own first m by p elements to it element wise and in the second iteration forwarded it to node 3 and so on. So at the end of p minus 1 iterations, it reaches node 0, okay? Any questions on this? So this we've already discussed before, I'm just uh, repeating it, right? So what is the time it takes? What is the cost analysis? Well, there are p minus 1 iterations and in each iteration, I am sending m by p elements. Yeah? Okay. So the only difference is that uh, when I had discussed this algorithm earlier, I had taken the entire array to be of size mp, right? Because we were doing reduce scatter. So if I assume my entire array to be of size m, then this is the formula, right? If you assume your entire array to be of size m times p, then your formula will just change in this term, right? This will become m times tw, right? Doesn't matter. So what do we want to do now? Well, we want an optimal algorithm for all reduce, right? We don't have an optimal algorithm for all reduce in terms of tw, right? Ignoring ts the cost associated with startup. So what can I do? Can you think of anything? Well, remember, all reduce can be written as reduce scatter plus all gather. What is all gather? All gather says that there are some parts lying on each node and at the end of the all gather operation, I want all these parts on every node. Gather was that take all the parts from all the nodes, assemble them on one node. That was gather. All gather is take all the parts from everybody, assemble them on all the nodes, get them on all the nodes, right? So what do we have at the end of reduce scatter? Well, this is lying on node zero. This is lying on node one, right? The final result. This is lying on node P minus two. This is lying on node P minus one. And if I do an all gather of this, that completes my all reduce. This is after the reduce scatter, right? The corresponding sums, these have already been added up over all the nodes. Yeah, this exists on node 0 and so on. This is distributed. And if I just do an all gather, then everybody will have the entire sum of all the elements. So that is nothing but an all reduce. Okay, so all I'm going to do is an all gather. How can I do an all gather? I do exactly the same thing that I did over here. So remember, reduce scatter and all gather are duals. So you can implement all gather by just reversing reduce scatter. So the algorithm will be exactly the opposite of this. What will you do? P minus one will start by sending the data for node zero, right? Simultaneously, this is the first iteration. In the first iteration, this will send the data for P minus one. This will send the data for P minus two and so on. This will send the data for zero will send the data for uh, one and this will send the data for two. This will send the data for three. Okay, so that's the first iteration. It's exactly what we were doing in reduce scatter, except for now you're sending the data back, right? What will you do in the second iteration? Well, second iteration, you're just going to forward this, right? You'll forward the zeroth part. And also what am I going to do over here? I'm going to keep this data, right? Node P minus two has just received the data corresponding to the zeroth part, right? That's the first M by P elements. It's going to keep it with itself because we are doing an all gather, right? Whatever it gets, it's just going to keep on accumulating it. In P minus one iterations, it will receive data, all the P minus one parts of the array, right? So in the first iteration, it has received part zero. It's going to keep that data and forward it, okay? Now, what is node P minus one going to do? Well, it's just received the data for this part, right? It's going to forward that over here. So now look at P minus two. It had the zeroth part, now it's got the first part and so on, right? So every iteration, all the P minus one iterations, it's going to keep on receiving another M by P elements. And in P minus one iterations, it will receive all the data, right? So remember one piece of data, it already had with itself. So that it does not need to receive, right? So there are only P minus one iterations, okay? So what is the cost of doing a all gather? Exactly the same. There are P minus one iterations. Each iteration, we are forwarding M by P of the data, yeah? There's no addition, et cetera, involved as was in the case of reduce cat. That's the only difference, right? So what's the total cost of doing the all reduce? What is the all reduce cost? Two times P minus one 
Ts plus n by p Tw. So let's just uh, multiply this and see. So what is this? This is 2p minus 1 Ts. Let's separate out the Ts and Tw term. 2m times 1 minus 1 by p, right? Tw. So this is what? This is order m Tw, right? If I ignore the Ts term. So again, you have to be careful when you're choosing the algorithm. Let's go back to our table, right? So this is what we have now just discussed, right? The chain algorithm for all reduce. So this is the cost and it matches the lower bound, right? MTW was the lower bound and we are almost there. I mean, within a factor of two, yeah? Of course, when you compare it to other algorithms, you have to be careful because the TS term coefficient of TS has shot up, right? So when you're dealing with large messages, Definitely, this is a better algorithm, right? The chain algorithm. But when you're dealing with very short messages, this is not the ideal algorithm, right? You'd rather use the recursive doubling or other algorithms. Because there, the TW is very small. You can ignore TW and you're concentrating on TS. TS may be much larger than TW if your messages are really small. So now we have a matching algorithm for all reduce. 